systems are go. Uh, Roger, we confirm. The guidance system now going internal. Uh, right Roger, copy. Now moving into the final minute of the count. Just one minute. Ready for ignition is on. 11, 10, 9. Nine, nine, nine. Sequence is starting. Engine is on. Five, four, the engine's now eight, building eight, up to 7.7 million pounds. All engines running. We launch the ramp. Twelve people. That's it. Twelve people. A few days of shuffling and shambling across gray, airless hills. A few hundred kilos of rock and dust return to Earth. Feet per second and dropping. Splashdown time. 40, uh, 53 seconds past the hour. Then, the adventure ended. And yet the moon is right there, right now. It's so close. It's like a familiar village watched every day on the other side of a bottomless canyon. We see it. We sense it. It fills us with questions. But it's elusive. But now, we're back. This is the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO for short. In 2009, LRO threw a rope across the canyon and climbed back to the moon. A new adventure began. Entering orbit, the probe began to map the moon's surface in unprecedented detail. For years, humanity has had better elevation maps of Mars than our own moon. LRO started to change that. This is an elevation map of the moon based on measurements from earlier missions. On LRO, the LOLA instrument uses a laser to collect precise elevation data for a new map. It also examines the dark shadows of polar craters to check for ice. Other instruments, like Diviner and LAMP, search for signs of ice too. In all, LRO contains six instruments, a complete package of research tools designed to help us figure out what it would take for an extended return visit, or even a permanent settlement. But LRO can't reach out and touch the moon. It can't dig under the surface like astronauts did years ago. So check this out, a companion vehicle sent on a collision course with the moon, designed for one brief, shining moment of scientific inquiry. That's L-Cross, and here's how it works. By carefully shepherding flight paths and orbital trajectories, the L-Cross team turned the spent upper stage of the launch rocket into a high-energy lunar impactor. The empty shell was sent on a collision course with the moon, aim to send up a plume of lunar dust and debris, and maybe even water ice. Instruments on the L-Cross probe and telescopes back on Earth, trained on the expected crash site cloud, gathered valuable data about what hides beneath the lunar surface. Then, like a captain refusing to give up the ship, the L-Cross probe itself plunged to its doom. But before crashing into the surface, it flew through the ejected plume sent up by the vehicle that preceded it, allowing one chance to actually sample and examine the excavation's product. LRO and LCROSS were both designed to look for lunar sources of water. Water means astronauts won't have to carry heavy stores with them, either to drink or to convert into rocket fuel. But these missions also reignite exploration about something we feel collectively we ought to know better. It's always there, always a part of our days, tied to our lives throughout the history of humanity. So near, so far, the moon is our poetic muse and the intractable promise of lands over the horizon. Now the adventure continues.
guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's alright, I don't mind a bit. Okay, you got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the limit. Are you getting a TV picture now, Houston? Neil, yes, we are getting a TV picture. You're in our field with you now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap.